this time we will uh, leave all passengers at the platform and we will leave them there for at last the next two hours because we are only focusing on freight transport this time or mainly we have invited experts from the railway administrations as well as experts and stakeholders on logistics to provide insight and knowledge about the current developments and plans we will receive presentations on the border crossing lines as the Ufoten Malbao line. We will see how Nordvik have succeeded in being a logistical hub for Northern Norway, in addition to the millions of tons of iron ore shipped out to the world markets. And you will also be familiar with the term concept assessment study and get information about the current study investigating the transport system in Northern Norway, including the benefits and costs of extension of the Nordland line from Fauske to Trosa. The former three county councils in Northern Norway made a joint strategy for freight of fish products and called it uh, from coast to market. This strategy is a good example of regional strategic thinking in order to serve the industries and to recommend prioritizations in the planning processes for the making of the national transport plan. Eirik Selme from Troms and Finnmark County Council will present this. And as we have uh, had in the previous uh, webinars, we will receive presentations of the development uh, from of the railway systems from Finland, Russia, and Sweden. We will look forward to that. And the last intervention is cast light upon the broad picture and seek to line up the scenarios where the railroad is going. Stig Nedal is the expert on transport and logistical issues in the Arctic and will share his perspectives with us. The purpose of Beata is to gather people and share knowledge and to inspire each other when it comes to Barnes transport issues. We have two sessions with questions and comments, and uh, they are open for all kinds of intervention from you. And uh, if some of you are inspired to ref reflect on what Beata should follow up from today's webinar, it would be most welcomed. <clears throat> Norway is approaching the end of our presidency, but I am certain that our Finnish friends will appreciate any suggestions for actions or a topic to develop further. Now, <clears throat> I am uh, pleased to, to welcome Tuul Nikolaisen from the Railway Directorate. He will give us a presentation on Ufut Malmbanan, its role in the past and with perspectives for the coming years. You know, if uh, we had a corona-free world, this uh, webinar should be actually a seminar uh, in Nordvik. But unfortunately, we are prohibited from traveling and uh, we will have to visit Ufopan uh, virtual. And the tour, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Stan. I try to share my presentation with you. <clears throat> Yes, it looks good, Tui. Yes, thank you. And thank you for the invitation to, on behalf of the Norwegian Railway Directorate, give this uh, presentation. To some of you, uh, some of the information is uh, well known, but uh, maybe not everybody has uh, that detailed information about the Ufotenbane. So first, some key properties concerning the building of the, this line uh, from Kiruna in Sweden and to the port of uh, Narvik. And uh, with an initiative taken from uh, a cooperation between uh, Sweden and Norway to establish this, uh, this line. You see the different data concerning the length uh, when it was electrified, uh, remote controlled and so on. Um, the fifth issue, passing loops, which is uh, kind of crucial. I will elaborate a little bit more upon that uh, later on. With the five passing loops, uh, uh, with the capacity of holding 
750 meter long trains. Uh, as you can see uh, on the altitude and uh, the scale concerning uh, to, to what height this uh, railway is going, it is um, <laughs> quite some altitude to, to, uh, to overwin uh, concerning the trains. And with the ore trains going westward from Kiruna to Narvik, and with the total weight of the train and uh, the empty trains going backwards. And uh, with the regeneration of electricity concerning the running of this railway, uh, it's almost uh, so that the electricity regenerated on the westward uh, traffic is enough to pull the train back again up to the mountain. Some more figures concerning the, the size of the, um, <clears throat> this part of the line in Norway. It uh, covers only 1% of the railway network in Norway, but it, uh, it uh, runs about 60% of the tons of the railway network in Norway. And this is obviously because of the ore, which is uh, heavy load and uh, with continuously running through all the year and also with uh, 11 to 12 trains in each direction per day. The, one of the challenges concerning this line is that it is single track from uh, Norwich to the national border and also to Kiruna. I guess that uh, our colleagues in the traffic party in Sweden, they will say maybe something more about that situation. There are several measures uh, who, which have been undertaken during the last year. And that is passing loops, which increases capacity and also puts into the system more robust uh, traffic. And the last four passing loops, which was built, you can see from uh, 2010 through the years to 2017. In addition to that, there are uh, challenges concerning operation and maintenance. And that is because of the heavy load, the heavy haul concerning the trains. And with also a rough uh, climate situation with harsh winters and uh, with snow conditions and low temperatures. So uh, it's obvious that the line is kind of very heavily used. Um, uh, Paul uh, announced that we will mainly focus upon uh, freight, and th that is that is okay. But I, I'd like to also point out the use of the Ufotban, which in the initial phase was for trains from Kiruna to Narvik carrying ore. But then again, um, through, the, through the years, it has been established passenger trains as well between Narvik and Sweden, and also these general cargo and container trains from Narvik through Sweden and to Oslo, the red line on the figure to the right in the, in the slide here. And also with increasing passenger demand, uh, both concerning regular and specifically tourist trains, because of the increase in tourists to the, and that was before the pandemic times, and, and hopefully also we uh, will uh, come back to a new normal, we'll also tourist uh, trains will be, uh, more visited them. And as well also as new general cargo container train demand. And uh, in addition to that ongoing initiatives, which the port of uh, Narvik will elaborate a little bit more than afterwards. Projects and plans concerning the Ufotban, uh, ongoing and approved projects. And that is to put uh, the possibility of transporting more ore, and that is through uh, increasing the axle load, which is about 30 tons today, and up to 32 and a half ton, where they, uh, there has been run test uh, trains, and to check out uh, what are the um, maintenance uh, challenges concerning to have that load, and uh, so far, actually so good. The introduction of a new signaling system by the year of 2027 and also in addition to that studies and planning work concerning to extend the capacity through Narvik station and that is specifically for ore trains. Um, 
And since, as you saw on the last slide, there has been an increase concerning um, general cargo and container trains. This also calls for or has created a capacity problem in the freight terminal of, uh, of Narvik and where there is good work going on. And uh, we are very close also to finance the building of both those two projects. And then again, uh, to look into and to study even more than the permanent situation of a heavy axle load, which also then will increase the line capacity. There is a higher north focus, uh, both from the government and parliament of Norwich's uh, point of view then. And uh, last uh, Tuesday, there was a discussion in the parliament of, uh, of Norway concerning the higher north situation, or maybe that was one and a half week ago. And we'll, with a discussion concerning to build even more railroad from, uh, from uh, Bode or from Fauske up to Tromsø. Uh, there is an agreement from the government and parliament of Norway that projects which increases international cooperation, and as you can see then knowledge development, business development and so on is important for the high north and for Norway as, uh, as total. This also reflects in our participation in uh, uh, or our contribution to writing the joint parents transport plan. I mentioned the capacity problems of the Ufutban and uh, where there is a cooperation between uh, the Swedish Transport Administration, Trafikverke, and uh, also the Department of Transport in Norway and uh, the Railroad Railway Directorate. And uh, there are ongoing studies to look into uh, when into the future should the double track be realized and in the first place, possibly more passing loops are the actual measures. Uh, concerning the Ufotban and also uh, the other uh, railroads up north then from Trondheim to Bode, uh, we are working to implement the strategies which is, uh, which is uh, documented through the national transport plan for the next period. And also, and as I understood, uh, the concept choice study concerning transport solutions in Norway will be even further developed uh, through the seminar. And uh, that study will provide input to the next national transport plan. So that was about it. Thank you. Thank you very much Stuart, for, uh, for taking us uh, into the Ofoten line and, and this, uh, I think the, the significance of, of this line is, uh, cannot be under overestimated. So, so um, uh, thank you for, for, for your presentation. Um, um, the Ofoten uh, starts and, and stops in, in the port of uh, Narvik. So uh, Narvik is uh, is invited to give uh, the, uh, give their presentation now, and uh, and I hope that we will uh, you are, you are present with us, Rune and and, and Greta. Um, so again, it's a pity that we cannot be present uh, in Norvik, but Rune, uh, you will take us through how Norvik have uh, succeeded in being a logistical hub in uh, the Norway, and how you plan to improve your role as, uh, as a hub. So, so Rune, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Paul. But I will give the word to my sales and marketing director, Greta Parker. So the floor is being hers now. <laughs> Greta, you are most welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Um, here at the Port of Narvik, uh, present is uh, myself, Greta Parker. Uh, of course, uh, Runa Arno and also Ragnar Krogstar. We call them the port directors because Runa is retiring and Ragnar is taking over. So we have uh, the port directors with us. Now I'm going to share my screen. Uh, 
Let me hear that. That should be a full screen view. Yes, it is. Go ahead. Perfectly. Thank you very much. Right. Um, we were originally thinking of starting showing a film that basically encompasses everything that we're going to talk about and also what the other speakers are talking about. But due to the risk of something going wrong with the technology, we're going to send you the link. But we encourage everybody to go in and, and have a look at that because it will tell you a lot about Narvik as a hub. The film's only two and a half minutes long. Now, looking at Narvik and the port of Narvik, I'll take us back to the humble beginnings. The uh, iron ore shipment and the cargo that goes through Narvik is the backbone of our existence as we are today. What Narvik would have been like if it hadn't been for the iron ore is hard to tell. But from day one, I'd say that we have been and still are an international hub. We're sort of the foreign department of Narvik. We're also probably the port in Norway that works the most with railway because without the rail and sea connection, the port of Narvik wouldn't have the, the volumes that we do and the railway connection for us is of vital importance. Already in 1903, when the first shipment went from the port of Narvik, the Norwegian State Railway had drawn a map showing the potential. Already then, Narvik was considered to be a hub and a link between the sea and land-based transport. And even then, they drew, draw, drew in north-south transport possibilities and also through the Barents region, the east-west uh, transport opportunities that we have. So, 118 years later, the port of Narvik looks like this. So from those humble beginnings and until today, the port of Narvik has developed into a fully intermodal port with all the current facilities that are needed in order to operate nationally and internationally and multimodally. We have the rail and container terminal. Uh, we also have a deep water ice free uh, keys. We have a brand new uh, railroad facility that opened in January this year. We have the cruise pier, which has been moved to the city center. And obviously the two iron ore facilities, Kaunis Iron and AKAB, who provide the, uh, the bulk exports from us. Because we are expanding and because there is a need for the connection between sea and land-based transport. We're also looking at developing some uh, more areas, which is what is under planning now. We're referring it to as Terminal North. To illustrate the volumes and the importance of Narvik as a transport hub for the Barents region, um, I'm going to show some slides that indicates the different volumes for the different categories of transport. The source for this is uh, transported Dickling. And for iron ore, the volumes that go through Narvik is about 20 to 22 million tons a year with LKAB and Konis iron that are currently shipping out about 2 million tons, but are looking to increase to about 5 million tons. The traffic that comes into Narvik, just to, to put a picture in your mind, each iron ore train that comes into Narvik has 68 wagons. Each wagon carries 100 tons of iron ore, and there are between 10 and 12 train sets a day that come in. That's just the iron ore for LKAB. And in addition to that, we have two trains a day with Kony's iron that are also coming in. Then moving on to the container traffic, which is obviously all this is in addition, it's all 
mines up to what uh, Tor just said in terms of volumes trafficking the Ofoten Railway. Container traffic uh, through the Narvik terminal is mainly consumer goods, uh, cars, uh, groceries, those kind of things, and then fish is what goes out. The uh, volumes have increased um, drastically, as you can see, which again allows us to work towards the Terminal North expansion and the terminal facilities that need to be expanded due to the number of containers that are looking to, um, to be or to use Narvik as a transport hub. Then, of course, there's the seafood. Um, seafood exports from our region has uh, increased by 14 since it started in 1994. When, uh, when we thought of the Arda train, and that was up and running. It was one train a week. And at the beginning, I remember people not believing in the product, sort of thinking, nah, that will never work. And look at us today. Uh, the export through Narvik on train is what is shown here. But, of course, you also have all the export that goes, just passes through Narvik on the road. So... Um, so the potential is obviously there to do a lot of work in order to move goods from roads to sea and rail. I've, uh, I've included this slide uh, in order to show some of the markets for the fish that is exported through Narvik. Now, the majority that goes through here with the uh, Arctic Rail Express and the Nordic Rail Express trains, they go south. They go down to Oslo, they go down to the continent. There's a separate fish train that also goes to Malmö in Sweden. Uh, but the potential, when you look at the market for fish, is obviously also east-west transport. And some of the fish that is exported to market and some is exported for processing and then for further uh, export, uh, either internally in the um, European Union or also uh, eastbound. So based on these facts and the numbers, there are a few important factors that cannot be overlooked. Orfoden Railway accounts for 1% of Norway's railway network, but carries more than 60% of all goods on rail messaging measured in tonnage. And the second one, which is really interesting, about 50% of all fish transported by train in Norway as a whole starts in Narvik. That just gives you an indication of the volumes we're talking about. The volumes, as you see, uh, about 200,000 ton, tons of seafood and 22 million tons of iron ore. And the value of the goods that are carried through here as well. Um, Norwegian milliarder is billions in, in English, so it's 25 billions in container traffic and $22 billion worth uh, in iron ore. The capacity, uh, Tor spoke a bit about the capacity and uh, the uh, need for more capacity. And also what we're looking ahead at based on current uh, projects that are running, uh, current requests that we have and initiatives that have been taken, then Konis Iron are looking to increase uh, from two to three trains per day. Uh, the Malmö train that currently runs once a week may increase their departures. Uh, we do have V, which is the national passenger train that goes through Sweden and comes in here. But in addition, we also have Arctic Train, which is a chartered company that are running two daily departures as well. So the traffic that runs on a single track Ofoten Railway is that was built 120 years ago is actually um, quite impressive. Now, also, the Port of Narvik have been working for the last year. We've been working with uh, Norman and Logistics. We've been working with Haparanda Antonio, 
in order to facilitate east-west uh, container transport between Asia and the port of Narvik. So looking at the potential, uh, we have potential north-south. Rail and sea transport are by far the greatest form of transport and considering the volumes of fish that are leaving our region by road, there is actually a huge potential for moving the goods from road to rail and sea. You saw the statistics earlier on of what actually goes by train, but this just gives you an indication of what actually also leaves by truck crossing the border into Sweden by road. And uh, this is where we have to look at how to move this traffic onto the railway and maybe also even the sea. But of course, the potential goes east-west. As I said, we've been working on this uh, project for a while. And uh, what we need to do is have good cooperation across border in the Barents region. Uh, it is important that new industries in the Barents region are aware of this facility or this opportunity, should I say, because just because Narvik, Port of Narvik is sort of the end destination or the start destination, depending on which way you travel, and Asia, Japan and China on the other, that doesn't mean that Sweden, Finland, Russia and Norway can't transport goods among themselves. It doesn't have to go from Asia to Narvik or the other way around. It can easily go from northern Finland or northern Sweden into Narvik or into Russia and use the railway line as a mode of transport internally in the Barents region. And I believe there's a lot of potential there, especially with all the new industries that are coming up in this region. You've got the um, Metsa in uh, Kemi, you've got H2 Green Steel uh, in, in northern Sweden, you've got uh, Alco Bears, uh, LKABs, um, new iron ore projects. So there is a lot of potential and we just need to work together in order to make sure we can make the most of these opportunities. So how do we do that? Well, following up on the Joint Barons Transport Plan, I think is a first. It was signed in Narvik in 2013, and we're actually coming up to 10 years in 2023. And I reckon that might be a great opportunity for everybody to get together again as a sort of a 10 year anniversary. We could get together here in uh, Narvik again. Everyone's very welcome. Have sort of a re-signing of that and a rejuvenation re of the uh, transport plan to uh, make sure we actually do stay and work together as a region. We need to have close cooperation between the railway administrations in all countries uh, in order for seamless transports to be able to run both east-west and north-south. Short sea shipping routes will be very important. That's another project we're working on because once all the goods are arriving uh, to Narvik by rail, it is just as important to be able to distribute this locally or regionally here in a uh, sustainable manner rather than it all going by truck. The focus on sustainability is becoming more and more important and using the advantage that we have up here with the railway, then we can actually promote green and sustainable transport solutions. But also what is very important is the, um, the fact that rail and sea transport or modes of transport have equal regulatory framework uh, as the road does. Because today, road is cheaper and people, money, time is money and money talks. So in order for us to be able to compete on, uh, on equal terms, we also need equal regulatory frameworks. So, uh, with sustainability in, uh, in focus, it's not just green transport. Sustainability is a lot more than that. And the Port of Narvik is working uh, on several projects where we are looking at becoming an energy hub. 
or a sustainable hub. Uh, we're looking into shore power uh, for cruise ships uh, as well as for uh, cargo ships. We are looking at renewable energy projects, uh, hydrogen in particular. We are looking at uh, making buildings more green. Uh, solar panels might sound a bit funny up here where we have uh, darkness for four or five months of the year, but, um, but those kind of things. Um, underground heating um, using uh, the, the warmth of the uh, ice free uh, seawater and energy storage. Uh, are again among other projects that we are looking on. Now there's a new company that are going to um, establish themselves here. It's called Teco 2030, and they produce uh, hyd hydrogen fuel cells. And they are going to start up in Narvik within the next couple of years, and are looking to um, engage in the community. So they've actually reached out to us and asked if there is a project we could do together. And as it happens, the Port of Narvik is looking at um, acquiring a new harbour boat. So why not go together with Teco 2030 and use the hydrogen fuel cell project that they're uh, establishing and try and have a development project as a new standard with, um, with green energy efficient and fuel efficient boats in our port area. And then of course also the smart city projects that I'm sure several uh, other municipalities and ports are uh, taking part in. So by putting all this together, um, we are using our focus on development and intermodal transport and how do we do that and how do we see the future for infrastructure in Arctic Europe? The answer is not given, but there is a lot of potential and why not optimize current infrastructure instead of always building new. Now, building is obviously important, but by, um, by upgrading and by optimizing what we already have, we can have uh, cost efficient and beneficial transport solutions for the entire region. So we just have to ask ourselves, are we using what we have to our fullest potential? How can we improve on that together as a region? The Barents region has great opportunity to provide competitive and sustainable transport solutions, ensuring fast and reliable access to markets across the world. So all we have to do is to agree that this is what we actually want to do. Thank you. Thank you, Greta, and uh, thank you for the, the comprehensive uh, presentation about, uh, about Narvik. Uh, if, uh, if there are questions uh, that the participants do have, you can use the chat function and, and, or save them to the to this small session we have after the presentations uh, in, in this first part of the webinar. Very interesting indeed. Uh, the next point of the agenda deals with strategic long-term planning. And um, in, uh, in our uh, world of, of strategic planning in Norway, we use the term KVU, that means Konceptvalgutredning or, or concept assessment. This method is applied for all major investment projects to create a foundation for decision-making and for further detailed planning. Many of you know Ina Hilling quite well 
from the recent report on the 24 hour rest areas. She uh, is from the National Public Road Administration and she will present us for the comprehensive work with the concept assessment of the transport system in Northern Norway. Ina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Paul, and good morning, everyone. Um, one second, please. It looks uh, good, uh, you know. Thank you. My video won't uh, start. What's that? Um, I'll try once more. Okay, I, I think I, I must continue without the video because it uh, went down. Sorry right. about that. No well, uh, the National Transport Plan for the period uh, 2022 to 2033 states that the following year. The government will carry out and follow up a concept study for transport solution in Northern Norway, including assessments of the need for a new railway, the Northern Line. The concept study is commissioned by the Ministry of Transport and Communications and is being prepared as a collaborative project uh, between government institutions and public administrative bodies. Uh, which in this case are the Norwegian Public Roads, uh, Roads Administration, Avinur, the Norwegian Railway Directorate, the County Governor of Nuland, Nuland County Administration, the County Governor of Troms and Finnmark, Troms and Finnmark County Administration, and the Sami Parliament. In January 2021, uh, groups, uh, working groups were established to work specifically on the following topics. Regions as residential and labor markets, cross-border corridors and international cooperation, intelligent transport systems, landscapes and the environment, um, uh, traffic safety and civil protection, uh, traffic transport and economics, and business and industries, and indigenous interests. In addition, uh, there are groups that take care of data and, uh, and maps and, and communications. Norway is characterized uh, by long distances and a scattered population. The terrain is varied with high mountains and vast plateaus and a fragmented coastline. The area of Norway equals 35% uh, of Norway's total area and the population equals 9% of the total population. As you see, Northern Norway compared to Denmark uh, is much uh, uh, larger and with a population uh, 10 times smaller, uh, in fact. The largest city in Northern Norway is Tumse with approximately 75,000 uh, inhabitants and the second largest is Bude with about 50,000 inhabitants. And North is not just North. <laughs> Uh, Kirkenes is um, uh, located more than 400 kilometers east of Tromsø. In fact, the two cities uh, are located at approximately the same latitude. When you drive between hubs in uh, northern Norway, the route from Bode to Tromsø is four, 530 kilometers uh, long and the route E6 from Tromsø to Kirkenes, 862 kilometers. And to compare, uh, route E6 from uh, uh, Oslo to Trondheim is 495, and Oslo-Copenhagen to Sweden, 606 kilometers. 
Norway is obliged to uh, uh, protect the indigenous rights of the Sami population, and Northern Norway is uh, uh, the most important area for reindeer herding. Large part of the region are used for reindeer, her reindeer herding, uh, for grazing areas and re uh, relocation, etc. More than 90% of the reindeer herding area in Northern Norway is already affected by physical interventions. Important industries in the north are uh, fishing, both uh, wild caught fish and uh, fish farming, and uh, oil and gas, uh, mainly, this is mainly in Finnmark, and tourism, consisting of small and medium sized enterprises. What does a comprehensive and coherent transport system mean in practice? I will give you two examples uh, of transports from and to Northern Norway. And uh, example one is cod from sea to Europe. This is um, an example of fresh fish, fish caught uh, of the coast of Norland and carried by road to Narvik. The first means of transport uh, for the wild caught cod is a fishing boat from the catch site to, the, uh, to a fish reception center uh, facility on land. And from there, the fish is loaded onto lorries and, and the journey often starts on a narrow county road um, where the road standard is poor. Um, then it enters the EC and the EC also have sections with, uh, where the road standard is, is uh, quite poor. Arriving in Narvik, uh, containers are loaded onto railway carriages for transport by the Ofoten line uh, via the main railway um, in Sweden to Alnabru in Oslo. At Alnabru, the fish once again uh, will be reloaded onto lorries to be carried through Sweden to Padborg in Denmark, where one of the major storage facilities for fresh fish to Europe is located. These fish transports uh, have a very high value and the value increases uh, in tra if transport time is, is uh, reduced. On the map, you can see um, important uh, fish roads in, in Northern Norway. Example two describes transport barriers. Uh, on the website in March this year, you could read about Evil Greeny Transport, a company that was carrying a transport of 84 tons from uh, Drammen to Storstedt in the north. From Drammen, uh, the lorry traveled east towards Karlstad, then north through Sweden and Finland, and into Norway again at the border crossing at Kivulumpolo. There is a bridge in Storslet uh, with a maximum capacity of 65 tons. Uh, uh, so uh, the um, uh, vehicle could not arrive fr from the south and uh, had to drive via Alta. Uh, and in Alta, the vehicle was stranded uh, in bad weather for 48 hours due to landslides at two places on the E6. Uh, but still, it's not the weather the driver emphasizes as a major challenge. According to Greeny, what is really demanding for the heavy transport is a very difficult and costly system of different rules and conditions they need to consider. Among other issues, we have the mad uh, mandatory um, escort uh, vehicle uh, service um, from the Norwegian public roads uh, when crossing bridges um, for vehicles with loads more than 65 uh, tons. And you have um, a maximum capacity on bridges in Norway with three different weight categories. Then you have a mandatory nighttime uh, driving in Norway, uh, while at the same time it's illegal to drive in tunnels with maintenance work after 10 o'clock in the evening. Uh, and you have various custom documents that need to be handled, registrations into and out of the different countries, 
and uh, in 2021 you have the corona testing and you have cost of escort vehicles which exceeds the actual transport costs each country has its own weight limits uh, system exception schemes etc and it's difficult for the inspection authorities in the different countries to communicate because of different rules and regulations and um, <clears throat> I hope this uh, two examples give you a small peek into uh, some of the issues that we will study um, until 2023. The request for this concept study um, shows that political politi politicians are serious uh, about their vision to uh, invest in North Norway in the years to come. And the study is a part of a long-term political strategy to highlight the importance of Northern Norway to the rest of the country and also to uh, parts of the rest of the world. And poor uh, road standards, delaying fish transports and bureaucrat bureaucratic barriers, uh, making cross-border goods transport uh, unnecessary difficult. These are issues that uh, do not promote favorable infrastructure that ties the country more efficient together, makes good use of regional resources and promotes regional and national development. Civil protection, preparedness and climate are important keywords in this study. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, uh, Ina, for uh, for this uh, interesting presentation, and and uh, I do hope that I or I am certain that you will provide a very good foundation for decision making when when the report is is ready. So I wish you best of luck with the, with the work. Okay. Now we do have a presentation from the regional level. Uh, the county council in Northern Norway wanted to improve, as Ian also focused on, the transport links from the locations processing fish uh, at the coastline and to the markets, both domestic and abroad. The findings from this study and the, the dialogue with the industry led to the document called From Coast to Market. Eric Selmer is also well known in the Beata family, representing Trums and Finnmark County Council. He will give a brief presentation on this strategy and its impacts. Eric, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Paul. Um, I will uh, share the screen. Can you see the picture now? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you for the invitation. I will give a short brief about the cost to market strategy. Uh, from coast to market is a collective strategy between the counties Troms and Finnmark and Nordland in North Norway. The strategy was uh, made in a meeting between the authorities in North and the transport agency. I think it was back in 2014. Uh, 14. The strategy focused on transport corridors for seafood industry from towns, cities and villages along the Norwegian coast and owed to the European continent and other markets all over the world. As you can see in the map, there is a, some example of routes. Um, our goal with the strategy is to reduce the number of prioritized bottleneck in these corridors in North Norway. And Ina have mentioned some of the uh, challenges around these corridors. Uh, the seafood industry uh, generates the most road traffic of any sectors in North Norway. Uh, it is approximately around 50,000 trucks per year uh, who's running around with fishing transport inside the region and out uh, to the market. Today, fresh fish is primarily transported directly to the European market by trucks. Uh, example from Trums and Finnmark is uh, approximately 35% of all the seafood. And the seafood transport start and run on off the uh, uh, regional road with some bad condition, some uh, avalanche uh, challenge, and uh, go over to the national road. Uh, the main challenge here is also the winter condition. 
when it and it go out for the national road network and its course it will be continue on the largely the it will continue and then and will also largely depend on the infrastructure in, in our neighboring countries um about 50 percent of all seafood uh, primarily frozen fish are transported from Trons of Finnmark by boat to the national hubs in uh, Europe. Uh, the rest of the transportation are either by a combination of road rail or road plane. Uh, I think totally in North Norway is about around 30% of the fishing transport going out by train. Uh, it's not so many percent going by uh, airplane, but uh, the road to Helsinki Sol is the primary type of tra transportation by plane from Trums and Finnmark. Uh, currently, the only proposed zero emissions measure in the coastal market strategy is the electrification of the railroad in Norway. The strategy encompasses both polit political uh, priorities and over in our region, as well as the region's recommendation to the national transport plan. For example, E8 from Tromsø and E45 from Hammerfest Alton. All these uh, corridors continue on the Finnish and Swedish uh, roads and the railway corridor, 10 T corridor from Norway. As these corridors continue to our neighboring countries, the strategy uh, recognizes the importance of bilateral cooperation, uh, in the Barents Corporation especially, and inputs to the joint Barents Transport Plan, and no inputs to the 10 T. Uh, network. There is a great potential uh, for growth in the seafood industry, and the number of transport could uh, double by 2040. Uh, there is a need for suitable and new green transport solution uh, because of this potential. This solution needs to be dimensioned to match the expected growth in the seafood industry. In order to get more of the transport over from road to rail, the political ambition, as mentioned by Tour, in the region, in the region is to extend the railway from Fauske to Norwich and from Norwich to Tromsø. Uh, the cost to market strategy is also an important part of the ongoing study uh, mentioned by Ina later, uh, earlier, excuse me. To the end, I will say that the future development and the effect of the cost to market strategy depend on the finance, uh, financial priorities of the region, regional and national level in Norway and our neighboring EU member countries. All this transport based on a very good Borens cooperation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Eric, for, for, for your overview and, and your approach from, from the regions uh, with, with the need for, for improving the transport systems. We do have time uh, for uh, one more uh, presentation, and we have received a request from the Northern Axis Barons Link project. This is a project aimed to development of the East-West Transport Corridor and Cross-Border Cooperation and supported by the Cold Arctic Program. So this is a follow-up actually from, from what Eirik Selmer presented uh, just now. And I'm, I'm very pleased to, to introduce Jörn Elby. He is a general manager of the BA Center North at the Arctic University in Tromsø. So Jörn, I'm very pleased that you can, uh, can share your uh, presentation with us. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Paul. I'll lift up the, uh, the presentation here. You see it? Yes. Very good. So um, uh, I will give a brief uh, presentation of the uh, the project Northern Access Barents Link. Uh, which is uh, led by Tatiana Petrova in Tanya. 
Um, so on behalf of her, I make this presentation. First of all, we have the global uh, perspective, which is the, uh, what is our uh, basis here? We have a large region and we have uh, connections um, eastbound and westbound. And we have just added, um, uh, the Russians want us to, to also focus on the, um, on the new uh, corridor that are being focused on now down to, to India. So we will implement that uh, as good as we can now um, at the end of the project. Uh, so the project aims is to develop east-west transport corridor and cross-border mobility in the Baden Euro-Arctic region. Um, the partners are, we have three Finnish partners, we have four uh, Russian partners, two Norwegian partners and one Swedish partner. And the, um, uh, the budget is uh, uh, approximately 1.2 million euros. So we have uh, four, um, we have four, uh, un uh, two, three universities here also included. So we are also taking care of the, um, the competence part here. Um, uh, the Northern Axis um, uh, project aims to um, develop east-west transport corridor and cross-border mobility in the Barents uh, Euro-Arctic region. Um, the, um, we, will, uh, we are exploring the potential for the main transport infrastructure in the border along um, areas along the Northern Axis. And of course, the important thing here is to identify the potentials if we work better together identify bottlenecks, increase understanding of each country's needs and potentials. And we will contribute to the joint Barents transport plan mentioned. And we will then highlight the peripheries, um, peripheries the possibilities and the challenges. And of course, as mentioned, the, the, um, we, will, we will include the, the students and, um, and the transport to transfer the expertise over there. Um, uh, the uh, Northern Accents Barents uh, Link project includes um, uh, also the potentials from the Northern Sea Route and the Northern Maritime um, Corridor. Um, and we, we want to, uh, to uh, effect an, um, a, a viable regional economy development that it could be uh, achieved uh, through a more efficient and easy through cross-border cooperation rather than the regions working on on their uh, on their own. We see uh, so far that uh, that we have learned a lot from from our, our neighbors in in Russia, uh, Finland, and um, and Sweden. Uh, we have um, uh, the the uh, the project consists of uh, altogether uh, eight uh, no sorry ten work packages. Uh, Four, two road-related uh, projects, five rail-related uh, projects, one into uh, civil aviation between uh, Finland and, and Russia, one wind-related uh, project uh, together with, with the project administration. And as you see, we are we're quite into detail of the transport uh, corridors here. And for our in our case, we have we are focusing on um, on the effects by um, increasing the capacity on the Ufotban and the Monban, so all the way from Nami down to uh, down to Lula. Uh, this, there has been mentioned a lot about the uh, the um, the fisheries and and the transport, uh, and uh, I will also mention the. Um, the uh, the uh, the sea the fish that has been lifted out of, of the Evnes airport in, in this region because it uh, gives us much better access to the market. So far this year, three thousand tons of fresh fish, salmon mostly, has been lifted to the markets in uh, Asia and um, and um, US through uh, through London hub. Virgin Airlines um, operating that for the moment. Uh, uh, also started uh, started the transport of fish from uh, from from Bude Airlines just uh, recently, and that's very good because we need uh, we need airports close to the uh, to, to to the fisheries. 
the, this uh, picture also shows uh, the importance of, of uh, our region around Narvik, uh, where we have uh, well, approximately 250,000 tons of, uh, of uh, fresh fish going via Sweden uh, with a railroad via Sweden and 150,000 tons uh, um, by car over, over Bjørnefell. So um, we need more, uh, more capacity uh, when it comes to infrastructure. Um, down at the left corner, you see a picture because Greta Parker mentioned that we are now we are now we are now transporting fish directly to um, to uh, to Malmo, but we don't we haven't increased the capacity for fish transport, and that is needed. So to uh, to uh, to um, to be able to do that. We need the balance in transport south and north. So we have to develop better systems together with, with the Swedish market as far as we see. So, so we have a lot to do in, the, in, the, in that part. Um, we have also looked into uh, to the different the rail, um, rail initiatives in, 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 in Lapland, another part of Norway and Sweden. And, uh, and we want to highlight the potentials of uh, of uh, more efficient uh, transport rail capacity between Kolari and Kiruna. So we are able to lift off uh, or better, better solutions, better basis for uh, industrial development in another part of Finland. Um, and finally, uh, I want to highlight um, something that is very important now because we don't, in fact, we don't have have um, uh, capacity left on on uh, on the track, especially between Norway and uh, Narvik and um, and and Kiruna. And uh, the the problem is that when disturbance disturbances occurs, we need more slots available to transport the necessary goods. And there are a lot of of uh, of uh, disturbances. So uh, so when we are we are doing this study now. And we will we will uh, we will focus very much on uh, what is needed and uh, what potentials it will give the uh, operators that today or the in industry actors that that today are don't utilize this uh, transport uh, uh, possibility as much as uh, they uh, they can. Okay, that was uh, all for now. Uh, we uh, we have to rem remember that the final beneficiaries are the better connect uh, uh, of the better connectivity of the people of the Barents region who will benefit of improving opportunities of fluent mobility of people, goods, and and knowledge. So, thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, uh, Jörn, for for this presentation uh, and and also very useful. Uh, useful information about uh, this project. Um, I, uh, we are now into the, the Q&A session. And um, uh, if uh, I uh, may, uh, may, and I, I will take the liberty to, to, to have the first question, actually back again to you, Jörn. Um, this um, study with, with the support from the Coal Arctic program in, uh, is um, focusing on many of the same uh, issues as uh, the, the more state official uh, concept study that Ina Hilling presented. And I wonder in what degree uh, do you, uh, um, do you have any um, contact or, 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 or cooperation or, or, or any, uh, uh, links to to the ongoing work carried out by the, the different transport administrations in this uh, Norwegian concept study. Uh, uh, we are we are. This is only a, a small study of the whole project. What, what we are we are we are included in. But uh, but we we uh, we are we have been focusing very much on the industry's need now in the beginning of the of the project. So we want to stay state the real the real needs. For for uh, infrastructure capacity, so we are, but we are we are we are we are we have contacts all the way into the uh, especially the, uh, the the rail the the road administration and the rail administration in Norway, and of course also the traffic back in 
in Sweden and the um, and the same one in, in in Finland especially. We don't have so much contact with, with direct contact with, with with the Russians, but we do that through through the uh, through the project manage, management in time. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, now it is uh, time for for the rest of the assembly to to. Uh, ask questions or reflect on, on the presentation so far. So, so I, will, uh, I will leave the floor and the microphone open if uh, anyone uh, would like to raise their hand or, or and uh, take questions. I see the Lune in Norvik is eager to, to uh, have a comment or question. Lune, the floor is yours. <clears throat> uh, I, I need to make something clear. Uh, when uh, uh, Jörn finished his presentation, uh, it said no rail capacity left. And uh, uh, that's not true. Uh, if you, if you uh, consider the 24 hour uh, day and night, but at peak time in the middle of the night, between 10 o'clock in the evening and 2 o'clock in the morning, there is a peak time in the terminal that says it's no capacity left on the terminal. And that's why Tor Nikolaisen said that this is going to be improved. So there can be a, an increased capacity at that time. All the time else during uh, the day is uh, still uh, space free for the, in the terminal and the rail capacity. It's about uh, six uh, train slots in each direction in free capacity on the railroad uh, if you don't uh, stop at the peak time. So it's no, uh, not true that it's no capacity left, but the capacity is uh, going to be, uh, uh, of course, used by others as soon as uh, the capacity on the terminal is getting better. So we are working on that. Thank you for a very useful uh, clarification uh, and, uh, and the issue, the capacity issue, I think also will be, will be highlighted in, in the coming Swedish presentation because uh, the, the, this uh, central railway line is only partly on the Norwegian side, but mostly on the Swedish side. And, and the issue of capacity is of course very dependent on, on every measure taken on the Swedish side. So we will return to, to Sweden uh, in, in, uh, in a moment after, after having the, the country presentations. So um, I can still not see any more raised hands or, or comments. You are most welcome to, to, to raise your hand. Yeah, I can I yes. say something more, Paul, uh, at the yeah. same time. You see, uh, uh, I saw that uh, Jörn drew a line uh, on behalf of the Russians from down to, to India. Uh, uh, you should know, and all the participants here should know, that the Porto Narvik has since 2004 been an associated member of the uh, Trans-Siberian route. And uh, we are a part of uh, the the commercial, what's the name? Commercial Council of the Trans-Siberian Transportation uh, going through uh, from Europe and all the way to Vladivostok or all the way to China, you might say, or also now I can see to India. That's very interesting. So we are an international port and a rail port. So the possibilities are there. So please be welcome to tell us something more about that. Yes, Jakko, you, you have raised your hand. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we have heard many very interesting presentations. Thank you very much for all the presenters and uh, especially you, Paul. Uh, one question that uh, came to my mind is uh, what what's going on with the Kirkenes port? Is there a... Um, what is the timetable, what is the schedule, when it will be started building? Or, because uh, I have understood that uh, there is a decision that uh, there is going to be a new port in Kirkenes, but uh, I haven't heard uh, what's going on there lately. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jaco. Um, personally, I am not uh, totally updated about the status of the Port of Kirkenes. I'm, I am not sure that we have any representatives from, from that port either. So, so it has been a long process and discussion between, uh, between um, the national uh, transport agencies and, and the municipality of Kirkenes. Uh, but Eirik, I, I see you have, uh, you can probably cast light, more light upon this issue and, and give updated information. Uh, a very short answer is that the planning process have stopped up at the moment. Uh, so it's not going on any planning process uh, involved with the transport agency or government at the moment. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. That, uh, I think that is uh, summing up uh, the status actually quite, quite briefly.